Good afternoon all, Camelback Trading.org coming to you this Thursday afternoon, January 7th, and we are looking at the SPY ETF's market profile here on Window Trader. And a very uh, productive day again for the bulls. Interesting day as we go out with the price probe uh, trend day that holds, but with 12 out of 13 wide. Very bizarre, very unusual. Um, the other indices, we finally, everything hit a new high today. The Dow, the Russell, the S&P, NASDAQ. The only thing that didn't was the transports. They're about 100 points. Well, they got about 50, 60 points off their all-time high. But everything else in concert hit today. Russell, open and drive, as you can see. They don't have single prints. They do go out with a price probe, and they're 11 wide. So they had a trend day that got filled. They go out with a price probe and 11 wide. Triple Qs. Now, here's something interesting, and this is the second time this has happened. So the NASDAQ composite, it was a couple of weeks ago, I believe, had hit its all-time high, and the Triple Qs were like $4 below their high. And I said, well, that's obviously going to get hit. Well, again, today, the composite hit its high constantly throughout the day, and the Triple Qs were having trouble. They also had an open and drive up, but they kept hitting a wall, near their all-time high. I told the room, even when it kept coming back in, we got, got close to E. I'm like, as long as the composite stays where it is and it keeps going to its all-time high, there's a good chance we're going to get it. And they also had an overnight all-time high, which was even higher than the fourth high. Now, I don't trade it. I was looking at it. I was tempted to take it, but certainly got some people in the room to take it as finally L takes out the all-time high and M gets the overnight all-time high. So beautiful, beautiful performance that they finally went in concert with their parent, which is the composite, right, and got it. Now, NQ didn't get it, and that's rare because usually the triple Qs is following the NQ. So I don't think the NQ got their all-time high just yet, which means there'll be new highs going forward. They also, just like the SPY and ES, have a set of single prints that held. Now let's get to us. We also had an opening drive. Drove straight up, took out our all-time high. Um, again, I had most of my trades in the morning that worked out very nice. I'll go over them in a minute. Missed a huge one, huge one in M period that we'll talk about. But first trade I took today is I said to the room, the only trade I would look for in A period is we trade up and get close enough to the all-time high and the overnight high because I think they'll front run it. That's exactly what they did. Took a 378 put play. I traded everything that expires tomorrow, by the way. 378 put play. Got up to around it. Came back in. Took it off. It was a very nice trade. Never saw the opening again, but it will turn out to be a very nice trade. Then in A, again, once I took it off, I said, well, now that we didn't get the poor high and the overnight, as long as we hold the opening, I think we're going to go get it. Got long. That's exactly what we did and had a nice trade on that. So a short in A, long in A. It was a 370, I wrote 366. It was a 376 calls for tomorrow. Now, B period open. You know how I talk about the lowest accepted price. That's when A period closes, which is right here. B period opens and only goes a couple of pennies below where A close. That shows to me a sign of strength. So when B period opened, and started going, I was like, okay, I want to be long. I got long again in B period um, and against the previous all-time high because I thought for sure um, we would keep going higher because of that lowest accepted price. That worked out. Took a long in D period. That one I actually lost on small. So we had the single prints. See, I didn't do anything. I got. I forgot exactly where I got out of my long in B, but it turned out to be a nice trade. I forget. So D comes in, took out the day's high, comes in. I'm like, well, I'm going to take a small long against the singles. I mean, against the one-time framing. If it gets it uh, out, if it takes it out, I'm out, only because the single prints were rather large. It took it out. I took it off again, just a small loss. Now, they did try to get into the singles some more. In E and F, I was looking more. So in uh, G period, I was like, 
I was looking for G to take out F. I wanted a little bit more of the singles taken out with better risk reward to take a pretty large trade. I was looking to take a large call play, basically, if we had come down maybe another 20 cents or so against B's low. I'm like, I don't care if they fill the single prints, but we have higher value. We have the lowest accepted price. I'm like, if we hold that, we hold half back, I don't mind taking a size play because look where Park was, and I thought we would come back to it. Well, never did that. I didn't get long. F, G, H, I, J, K and L's uh, openings all were basically the lows for those time frames that somebody pointed out in the room to me. Look at this 45 degree angle. I thought at some point it might get popped and get better trade location. Didn't happen. I took a small long in H looking. Again, it was only a small play, but it worked because it went back up. And um, took it off. So that worked out. M period. Now here's, huh, I told the room, this is what I would expect or possibly look for. I'm like, I don't doubt L's range was very small. I don't doubt we get a reversal ball. I said, if I wouldn't mind taking it um, along, if we get above L's high to make a new high and then take a short. Because look at the volume. Now I'm in. Five tick increments. But even if you put it in ones, the entire day's volume which was done within a very tight range. And I mean a tight, it's, it's about 35, you know, 40 cents. So I was like, that's it. And that's where the pock, the pock was just below the, the, the volume pock and everything. I'm like, I wouldn't doubt if we get a, a, a price probe and then come right back into this level. So I had my call play above L. It actually pulled back where I could have gotten long more, but I didn't. I said I'm more comfortable being long above L than here because I thought if we take out L's low, maybe we do wipe out this 45 degree angle. So I thought it was more prudent to be long here because then the odds of getting a high were good. And they did. I had a put play lined up, a 100 chair put play, 100 contract put play of the 382s at two dollars and forty-eight cents, got to two fifty-four. So when M popped, I had an offer to get out of my call play, which I got out of beautifully, and I had my put play lined up. Well, all it did was I was looking for a little more extension. That's why, again, it's not like trading the spy or trading the ES, where you can actually put a short play in at a at a at a price. I have to guess kind of where the puts are going to be trading if they get to that level in SPY. And that's why I figured around that range. It was like between 245, 250. That's why I put the 248 price in right in between it for 100 puts. Well, lo and behold, it got to 254 and it reversed on a dime. And those puts went from 254 to 315 in a heartbeat. <laughs> Literally could have made, I mean, I wouldn't have even had time to get out of them at worse prices because it, it really poured in pretty hard. So if I had gotten that off, I would have possibly made anywhere between four and $6,000 on that trade. Literally in a minute because it got up there and I'll show you on the minute chart. It would have been two minutes. I would have made about $6,000. It happens. Didn't get it. At least I called the market excellent. I told the room I thought the odds of closing back in that range were very good. That's why I was taking that put play. Well, it did, and look where we closed. Well, they have us closing up here right now, but and look where M settled, right inside of it. All right, let's go over destinations for tomorrow. One and only one on the upside, right? That's becoming a theme, 379.90. Today's high, all-time high. Downside, we have D's high. That's the price probe. Even though we close below it, like I said, we don't know if it's accepted or rejected to tomorrow morning. So 379.86 is my first destination. Then we're a dollar lower almost is the 12 wide. 378.95. M's low. It got raised. Then we have the single prints. 378.31. F's low to A's high of 377.93. Lowest accepted price. Boy, is that a visual, visual tool to use. 377.75. Then we have today's low of 375.92. So we have a buy tail, just under 200 ticks. And then below that, we have the single prints from yesterday. You should have all the other ones below.
Now let's go to the charts. Monthly, one time framing up, two months, I apologize, three months, including this month, out of an inside month. Very healthy. You saw on Monday, first, first day of the trading year, they pushed it down, got very close, not very close, I shouldn't say that. They got to within two and a half dollars of last month's low, but failed. Weekly, I told you this morning, and I'm going to say it again, where we close tomorrow is going to be very important. If we're able to hold above last week's high, right now we're five, almost $5 above it, well, then that's an outside week up. That's pretty damn bullish, and I expect the market to attempt to go higher next week again. But again, we still have tomorrow to do. Remember early in the week, people said we had an outside week down? Uh, no, we don't. Just like I'm not saying we have an outside week up yet. We'll see tomorrow. But if we do get it, healthy. Daily. Up. One time framing up two days now out of an inside week. Remember I said three-day balance? Well, we just came out of it to the upside. Up. So the monthly's up. The daily's up. The weekly has a possibility of being an outside week up. All time frames would be healthy at the all-time highs. Now, let's go quickly that minute chart, which I was telling you about. Uh, that's the 30-minute chart. Here it is. Look at this. So when we popped the day's high, again, I have to try to calculate where I think the, the option will trade at. I was obviously wrong by a little bit. I also thought we might get a little more out of what we did above the high, right? We, only, we took out the high and we only got, basically, we got four cents above, of the, above the, previous all time, you know, the previous high. So... Um, I thought we'd get a little more. That's why, again, where I put the, the put play. But look at this. Popped one minute. That's the next minute, folks. The next minute. So we went from 379.90 to 379.14. We went down 76 cents in a minute. Those options, again, were trading at 310. I could have made anywhere between five, whatever. We'll round it out at 5,000 in a minute. That's the, the unfortunate part of an option. If I was shorting, so what's 100, what's 100 puts? Is that, um, how, many ES, how many ES contracts is that? You know, I don't know. Is that 20 contracts on the ES? You know, at least I would know where to offer the ES, you know, around the 379 uh, and change level. You have to guess in the options where the puts are going to be trading if you get to that level. Hope you had a great day trading. Have a great evening. And we'll speak prior to the opening tomorrow.